Hello, today I'm going to talk about NaiveBase. NaiveBase is a supervised machine learning algorithm that can be used for classification. It can also be used for regression, but apparently it doesn't give good results, so maybe you should avoid using it for regression problems. One example about where the NaiveBase algorithm can be used is, for example, in classifi classifying span and and hem emails, so you can use that to with the tokenizer and with the so you have to clean your text data, and you can then use naive base to predict if a if a, a an email is spam or hem. Okay, naive base is highly or it's entirely based on the base theorem which is a theorem that you see in statistics and probability. So I'll try to explain it. And yeah, but as always, do not take this a, as a good explanation about this topic. Okay? So if you really want to, to learn about this, just go online and check for some videos or some lectures. There are excellent material online. Okay. So let's start talking about Bayes' theorem. So these slides, they come from a channel at YouTube called, I think the name is 3Blue1Brown, that's the name of the channel, which is a very, very good channel. It has very good explanations with very good il illustrations about these steps, about what is going on. So definitely go that to check what Bayes' theorem is. It has a very good explanation about it. And this is the link, by the way. So I'll try, I'll try to sum it up uh, what he talks about. But this is a very poorly explained, very poor explanation compared to his, to his. So you know. So in this video, he t he talks about the Bayes' theorem, and he uses a research from two psychologists psychologist I think and in this study there is a guy named Steve which is this guy over here this is Steve and this is a description about the personality of Steve Steve is a very shy and withdraw invariably helpful but with very little interest in people or in the wor world of reality a meek and tidy soul He's, he has a need for order and structure, and a passion for detail. That's Steve. The question is, given this description, do you think that Steve is a librarian or a former? So that's the main question about the video, about his video, and about half of my video. So think a little bit about it. Okay, so the first time that I saw this, what I thought is that Steve was a librarian, but I did forgot. I did forget. I did forgot to mention that, or to think that Steve, uh, that that there is a proportion of librarian to formers. So in this case, the proportion in the U.S. currently is sixty to one. In, the, in this research, the proportion is more like is uh, 20 to 1. So we are going to use the proportion that former to Lambert is 20 to 1, meaning that you have for one former you have 20 librarians, okay? And you do have to take that in, into, consider, into consideration when you have to answer this question. So again, the main question here is given this description. Is Steve a librarian or a former? So you can't solely um, try to predict what Steve is based on your assumptions, right? Based on your uh, assumptions about the personality of a librarian and a former. You, you can take that in consideration, but you do, do also have to take into consideration the proportion of librarians and farmers in the population. Because even though you think that this description fits more to a librarian person, 
there are many fewer librarians compared to farmers. So, considering that, Steve is more likely to be a farmer, even though this description fits more to a librarian. And I'm going to try to explain that in more detail now. So this, what is this? This is the whole population in our example. We have here 210 people. 200 of those people are farmers or are not librarians. 10 of those 210 people are librarians. From those 10 people, 4 of them fits that description or have that personality. From 200, uh, 20 of them have that personality. When I mean by having the personality, I mean having the, this personality here. Right? Okay, so you can see here that you may think that that personality, 40% of librarians have that personality and 10% of farmers have that personality. But you do have to take into consideration the proportion of farmers to librarians. Because if you don't take that, in, that into consideration, you are going to say that Steve is more likely to be a librarian because it has a 40% probability of being a librarian whereas it has only 10% of probability of being a farmer but if you consider the whole population you'll see that it's much more likely like here we have much many more farmers compared to librarians so it's like I don't know five times more likely for Steve to be a farmer than to be a librarian even though the description fits more to a librarian okay okay and okay so now let me try to explain what's going on here first we have here the same thing that as we had before okay and this column here this whole column here is the probability of a person being a librarian which in, in this case is 1 over 21 like it is 10 over the whole population which is 210 and can be summed up to 1 over 21 and this is known as the prior we also have here the likelihood the likelihood is saying is saying the probability of a person having that personality given that the person is a librarian so given that the person is a librarian that he has that personality it's 40 percent of the chance it's 40 percent chance so we have 10 librarians in, fr in front of you four of those people will have that personality which you can see here 10 uh, out of uh, sorry, 4 out of 10. Here we have the probability of the probability of a person having that personality given that he's not a librarian or he's a farmer, which is the same thing, is 10%. Okay? And you can see that by these green guys over here. Good. And this is the base theorem. We are going to start here and not here. So ignore this for now. And and this is our main question. So this is the question that I, 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 I asked you at the beginning of the video. What is the probability of a person being a librarian given that he has that personality? That's the main question. So let's let's see what's happening here first ignore ignore everything let's just consider this part here and do not consider this uh, red cross do not consider consider this crossed out yet so this is the total population so for us to answer our question we have to come up with this 
Okay, this will give us the answer. This first term here is the whole population, which is 210 people, this whole thing here, right? This is the prob uh, probability of a person being a librarian, which is this part here. And this is the probability of having that personality, given that the person is a librarian, which is this part over here. And this is the, main, uh, the upper part of our equation. This guy tried to explain like this, and he explains much better than I do, because this is supposed to be more intuitive. And it is more intuitive to me to look uh, at this kind of problem like this. Okay, so this is the upper part of our equation. This is telling us uh, the whole population, the probability of being a librarian, and the probability of fitting that description given that the person is a librarian. So these here are the librarians that give our, that um, fit our personality. So we have to repeat the same whole term here down here. You can see that's the same. And that represents this part. And this part over here is the probab is the, again the population times the probability of a person not being a librarian times the probability of uh, a person having that that um, that what is it that that characteristic that oh, I forgot the, I forgot the word having that personality given that he's not a librarian or he's a farmer, which is the same thing, which is this part over here. Okay. So you can think of it as being the, the proportion of the people that have, that, that are librarians and have that, and have that Again, this is the, uh, the, you can think of it as the people, as the probability of being a librarian and having the, this description. So we have to divide that to the, uh, to, uh, to the whole population, which is the same thing, plus the other people that also are not librarians and fit that description, which is this part over here. So, again, you can think of it as the probability of person being a librarian and fitting that description, and this as the probability of a person being a librarian, and, sorry, not being a librarian, and also fitting that description. And, like, in this, we, we did just as... Uh, um, a few seconds ago, like we we use the same the same principle or the same the analogous kind of thinking when we use when to get the this proportion we have to um, divide ten by the whole population, which is ten plus two hundred, so we divide 10 by the whole population, which is 10 plus 200. And here I'm doing the same thing. We have this value here, which is our 10 in the previous example, over 10 plus 200, which is the whole population. So the whole population that fits the description is this part, and this is just the librarians. So just the librarians and the whole population. And we divide that and we get, and then we get the probability of a person being a librarian, given that he has that uh, personality. Okay, and then we can remove this these quantities here because we can just move this out and multiply by this and this, and then we can cut this or crest crest this out with this, 
and moreover as this is all the people that fits the that that have that personality we can replace this by the probability of having that personality so this is the final bias by base theorem that you see out there but it's de derived from this part and sometimes you have to understand what's going on here so that uh, you can solve your problem okay now we are going to talk about naive base so let's let's move on so this is the naive base algorithm I'm going, I'm going to try to explain what's going on here if I can remember it correctly but I got this from Udemy which is the course that I take uh, at machine learning course that I take at Udemy it's a very good course as well and it has very good explanations about the uh, the intuition ab behind the algorithms and I feel th these slides I took from his slides but he has a much much better explanation in many more slides to go through so we, again if you want a good explanation do not follow me but go there and uh, check out his course so naive base algorithm here we have two features age and salary and again we have our samples and this is a classification problem so one of the classes is thrives and the other one is walks so I think this is like do you go to to your work walking or driving and the older you are and the the higher your salary is the more likely you are to drive to work and the lower your salary salary and the lower your age the more likely you are to walk to your job okay then we receive a new sample to classify to classify which is this one over here and the question is should we classify it as a person that is likely to walk or that a person that is going to drive okay so that's our problem and we are going to use naive base to solve it and these are the steps that we are going to follow um, this is the ba um, base theorem that we have just talked about so here we are trying to solve first so we have three steps. This is the first step. We are solving here the first step. The first step is to answer this. What is the probability of a person walking given that the person is this person here? So this symbolizes this X. So what's the probability of a person walking given that this person has this, sal this salary, which I don't know, maybe uh, 30,000 and this age maybe 25 okay so this is x that's equal to the base theorem that we have talked about um, before the first part that we have to come up with is the prior probability this is called the prior probability we we saw that also in the previous slide but I, I forgot to talk about it these are the uh, jargons that we have here in machine learning right or in base theorem um, actually so we have to first start by this prior probability so we, ha we are going to come up with this calculation then we are going to calculate uh, p of x then we are going to calculate this uh, likelihood here so let's try let's try to do that now so you'll have to remember it <laughs> the values on your uh, in your head because I as always I, I do not spend much time doing these slides and I do not want to yeah yeah so uh, you have just to uh, to memorize the values here in your head so to get this value let me try to remember this is the probability of a person walking to work and that you get from your whole population so it's going to be the person that walk you walks uh, divided by the whole population in this case we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten red samples 
and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 21 green samples by the way you'll see afterwards uh, that the professor thinks that there are 20 samples here maybe he mis miscounted it so we are going to consider that we have 20 instead of 21 green dots here okay so we have 20 dry samples instead of 21 just ignore this one for example okay so this probability is going to, again to be the the probability it's going to be red samples over the whole population that's the probability of a person walking in this case it's going to be 10 over 30 because uh, 20 plus 10 is 30 okay so that's p so we got this value this is 10 over 30 just try to remember it next marginal likelihood this is p of x um, okay I think I think I remember it so P of X is calculated by using this circle over here this circle apparently is a parameter for your algorithm but I actually didn't find anything that you can change or you don't have hyper hyper parameters to change on your uh, naive base algorithm uh, at least for the Gaussian naive base so maybe this is based on the prior probability and you actually do not have an idea about how to set it and people apparently do not have a grid search or do not I mean do not try try out different hyperparameters to get the best model but anyway uh, this circle here is supposed to be a parameter that you pass to your function but it seems like you always have this value here and you actually can't change it um, yeah that's what I concluded because I couldn't find any anywhere saying how to tune the hyperparameters for naive base and the professor actually says that this is the parameter so it's more like it's a conflicting point of view and if you ha if you go to scikit-learn and you have the Gaussian naive base you actually have two parameters to set one of them is a smoothing thing which I tried to change and actually did not change the the result and the other one was the prior which is this prior here maybe that's the one that you change and change things here but I don't think you usually have the prior right you would have to to, to guess it to all the classes maybe maybe you usually do not deal with that okay you just stick with the default anyway going back to the to the algorithm you have the circle which is a parameter that apparently you cannot you should not change and to calculate this p of x that's going to be the probability of x so it's going to be all these samples that are in the circle divided by all this all the other uh, samples so it's more like what's the probability of this sample falling in this place oh that's 4 over 30 which is these four samples over the whole population like we could have a sample I don't know here and then it would be oh what's the probability of this uh, sample falling down here oh then the circle could encompasses this one oh then the probability is um, 1 over 30 right and so on okay so p of x is again 4 over 30 and we do not consider this sample because this sample is the one that we are trying to predict right so again this is 10 over 30 and this is 4 over 30 probability of 
this sample happening given that he walks. So to calculate this, we have to uh, to ha we have to to not consider this one and consider only these three samples in relation to the walking people. Okay, so it's a three over ten. So it's the probability. Sorry, there's a. Uh, so it is the probability of this person being here, given that he walks. It is uh, three over ten. Okay, so you just ignore this one, and uh, the rest is, is three over ten. And that's that's the likelihood here. And then we have uh, all the values that we we want. So let's go to the next slide. And yeah, so the prior probability again is ten over thirty. The margin marginal likelihood is four over thirty, and the likelihood is a three over ten. And we get the probability of walking given that that sample fall at that location is 75%. So this whole thing here was the first step. The second step is to do the same thing for the drives. So instead of walks here, we would have drives, drives and drives. So let's try to think about it. So suppose that here you have drives instead of walks. So let's try to do it quickly. The probability of drives is 20 over 30. The probability of marginal li likelihood is, again, 4 over 30. Sorry? Yeah, 4 over 30, which is the same for the walks, right? The likelihood is 1 over 20. And yeah, that's it. And then if you calculate that for drives, we end up with this. Walks is 0 0.75 and drives is 0 0.25. So yeah, if you have a binary classification problem, one of them is always going to complement the other one. So if we calculate 0 0.75 for walks, we would have the complement of that to be drives. Therefore, as the probability of walking given that given those features is greater than the probability of drives given those features. Therefore, we predict this sample to be walks, to belong to the category walks. And that's how naive Bayes algorithm works. And if you go to scikit-learn, you'll see that they have, I think that they have this explanation right at the beginning, which is not as clear as clear as this one, but they talk about it. And then you have a bunch of different Gaussian model, uh, a bunch of different naive base algorithms that you can use. If I can remember, you have the Gaussian naive base algorithm, you have the Bernoulli uh, naive base algorithm. You have the multi multinomial naive base algorithm, and maybe more three or four other naive base algorithms. And you use those depending on s different situations, right? Okay. Additional information that I should mention is why naive. So why naive in naive base is because the base theorem assumes that you have independence among your features so each of your features are independent of the other features in this case here we can see that there is a dependence between salary and age right 
the higher your salary is, oh sorry, the, yeah, the higher your age is, more likely you have a higher salary as well, right? And that's why naive base is called naive because it assumes that you have independence um, among your features, but actually in reality you never have it. Like it's rare a case where you have independence uh, among your features. So he is naive to think that the features are uh, independent. Yeah. P of x. So just this is just remind me to talk about this value here, p of x. As I mentioned before, you see that p of x is going to appear here in walks and in drives as well. And it's going to be the same value. So we can simply ignore it if we are going to compare walks with drives. We are not get you are not going to get a probability, a real probability. So we cannot use it outside of the scope of this problem. But we can we can use to compare this comparison here. We can remove p of x and have this and get a um, a correct result. Okay. What happens if we have more than two classes? That's simple. Instead of having this only only these two classes, we would have more values here. Uh, I don't think they would sum up. No, they should, right? Sum up to one hundred. Maybe they shouldn't. I don't know. But you would have uh, probabilities here as well and you would select the one with the highest probability. Simple, not complicated. And that's it for Naive Base. It is a very statistical <laughs> algorithm, unlike the others that we have seen. Actually, the other ones also have some random things, but this one is the one that goes deeper into probability and statistics. Um, it is not a really hard algorithm apparently to learn and yeah but again you can definitely uh, find a better explanation about both base theorem and also from naive base online okay is there anything else on, uh, well it is a continuous model yeah we are going to Actually, I have already recorded a video of me implementing na naive base on Python. So there you can see that naive base is a continuous model. It is also a non-linear model. You have to do feature scaling. Maybe if you don't do feature scaling, this goes well. Yeah, I'm not sure how about how this circle is determined. So. Is there a distance involved here? Not sure. But I, I use feature scaling. I think I think it's a good idea to use feature scaling in naive base. And again, an interesting thing here is that I couldn't find any hyperparameter to tune. So maybe naive base do not have a hyperparameter to tune. And that's different because I think that all the algorithms all the algorithms that I have explained so far, they have some uh, kind of hyperparameter that you can tune. Okay. So that's it for naive base. Oh, maybe, maybe I should sum it all up. I always do that. Right? I, I should do that again, just so that I can understand what's happening here. So I talked today about naive base, and we talked about Steve, which is can be either a librarian or a farmer based on given that given this personality his personality and as always we cannot only consider um, the, the prior like the the probability of his he bring, being a librarian given that personality we can't consider only that we have also to consider the whole population and once we know that it's much more likely to have a farmer than a librarian, then you know that Steve is more likely to be a, 
a farmer, even though the description fits more to a librarian. Then we talked about the base theorem, the, its formula. We came up with this formula here, saying that this is this up here is the probability of a person being a librarian and having that um, that personality. And this is the probability of a person not being a librarian and having that personality. So this is the probability of a person being a librarian and having that personality. And this is the probability of the whole population having that personality. And that's why we can remove this whole thing and replace it for the probability of a person having that personality. Uh, yeah. And then we explain the naive Bayes algorithm, which is based on the uh, Bayes theorem. And the naive Bayes algorithm works like this. So we calculated each of these terms here uh, by looking at this graph. It was it's not complicated. And this is the first step. The second step is to calculate this same thing for uh, drives for the others for the other categories that we may have. And the third step is to uh, select the one with the higher probability. Then some additional information about why naive. Naive because it assumes that the features have in total independence among themselves, which is rarely, seldom, seldomly true. Um, we talked about removing p of x, this p of x here, which is not necessary uh, when you are comparing in this insert scope here. And what to do when we have more than two classes, which is to simply select the one with the highest probability among the, all the classes that you have. Okay, that's it for Naive Base. Bye-bye.